Every time we interview our farmers across the country, one of the major complaints we hear from them is the punitive cost of commercial feeds. Feeding cost effectively is a major headache for most farmers. Black soldier fly BSF may hold the key to solving this problem that has burdened farmers for decades. In our today's episode of Kilimo na Biashara, we introduce you to a young Kenyan graduate leading efforts to turn trash into cash. Our farmer today tells us that the insect larvae of the black soldier fly can turn organic waste and manure into very high protein feed. The insect's larva production is cheap, thereby reducing the cost of feed. They can help improve fish, livestock, and even crops productivity, leading to higher incomes while causing zero waste. Let's get his story. be a Shara show, a show that brings you different types of farming methods and all emerging trends in the agribusiness world. Remember we brought you cricket farming some time back? Well, today also we have another insect, black soldier fly. Many of you maybe have not heard about it, but let's see, let's learn about black soldier fly. Hi Linda. Hello. Hi. H how are you? <laughs> Fine. And you? I'm good. This okay. is the BSF hub. Yeah, this is the BSF hub. Uh -huh. Welcome to Zihanga Limited. Uh, Ziha? Zihanga Limited. Zihanga Limited. Yes. <laughs> wow. So where do we start at Zihanga? <laughs> we start by first explaining the name Zihanga, where it was from. Oh, where but where, where? Where is the hub? Like, we, we, we could be going. Yeah, we can be going. Okay. Yeah, okay. So BSF, Black Soldier Fly. Yes, black soldier fly larvae, mm -hmm. a part of the INSFIT program. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's under the sustainable goals for uh -huh. Zihanga. Wow, I see there's a lot here. Yes, there's a lot here, mm -hmm. but watch out there. Uh, there's oh. a hole there. Uh -huh. This pit is where our trucks actually dump the waste that we use oh, to the feed, mm -hmm. the organic waste that we use to feed our insects and larvae. Yeah. Oh, the organic waste, when you talk about organic waste, what does it involve? Organic waste involves anything that, for example, market waste, uh -huh. slaughterhouse waste, mm -hmm. uh, food waste mm -hmm. from households. Oh, oranges, and also, avocados, yes, everything. Yes, and excretion from oh. pigs and chicken. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. So they are put here? They are put here before mm -hmm. we move them to the other side. Oh. We can take you through mm -hmm. to the other pit so that you can see. Mm -hmm. Though we have emptied from where from the pit, mm -hmm. we actually transfer our waste immediately mm -hmm. to these pits which are around here. Mm -hmm. We'll show you the first pit. Oh. Though it has been emptied because we fed our insects just the other day, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, we oh. put them in these pits. Mm -hmm. And then we move them with wheelbarrows mm -hmm. inside so the greenhouse. It's basically they feed on the waste. They feed on the waste. Mm -hmm. And this waste is what is used for like... They feed on the waste and after two days it mm -hmm. becomes organic frass. Oh, let's That's go and organic see. fertilizer, yes. Mm -hmm. So we we'll enter our screen house. Mm -hmm. This is what we call the larvarium. Uh -huh. This is where we keep our insects oh. for feeding. Mm -hmm. And we have different units where we keep our insects because the insects has different stages. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you how oh, we take them from. Oh, this is big. Yes, mm -hmm. this is our facility. Mm -hmm. Except we started with this, as you can see. Mm -hmm. This is what we started, this kind of containers are what we started with. Uh -huh. But I will show you that later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's start where you can wear gloves. Okay. Please take some gloves. Mm -hmm. Hey Nicholas, will I manage with the smell here? 
Yeah, uh, you, you will, you'll manage because you've also managed for a very long what time. What is it? It's ammonia or what? It's ammonia, and uh -huh. that's the beauty about the insects. They produce fertilizer. <laughs> they produce the beauty. The beauty about the insects because mm -hmm. the fertilizer has so much nitrogen uh -huh. that helps farmers actually achieve their goals. So when you talk about black soldier fly, where do you get the flies? So black soldier fly, I'll start by our nursery unit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our nursery unit, which okay. we have collected uh, in the span of two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have now a young larvae. Mm -hmm. Here is our incubation stage, mm -hmm. and it's what's our nursery unit where the young larvae actually are born. Mm -hmm. Rather, uh, okay, let's say they're bathed. Mm -hmm. And now here is where we put our eggs mm -hmm. under waste, which is where the, when the, the egg hatches, mm -hmm. it just falls into the waste. Oh. So you can burrow and see. You can burrow through the waste and see. What is this first? What is this before I burrow in? This is slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. Yeah, matumbo. Oh. What we call matumbo. Ah, kama ni matumbo basi ni sawa. Nile chakula. So you'll see some oh, small larvae, so many yes, here. Yes, 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 yes. It's a here. Oh, these are the larvae now. So these are the larvae. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about this, this one crate that you're seeing, mm -hmm. serves 10 to 15 crates. Oh. 10 to 15 crates from this, 15 particular crates from this particular one. From this particular one. They haven't yet finished because some are still hatching. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, you can see this one just pure yellow. Oh, pure so yellow. What and is you can this? See, what is this? Like, this is what we call the conduits mm -hmm. and and also the also the cartons. We uh -huh. cut them. The reason why we we use such things. Mm -hmm. You see these small holes. Mm -hmm. The small holes that we have here, mm -hmm. though I'll explain it to you further mm -hmm. down there when mm -hmm. we move to our next facility, mm -hmm. the small holes here attract the flies, the female flies to lay the eggs. They mm -hmm. like hiding the eggs oh. to prevent predators from yeah. eating. From here, mm -hmm. we now start putting our insects in the cages because they're now capable enough for oh. producing their own heat. Mm -hmm. So in a place like this where it's cold, mm -hmm. uh, we now move to us these stages which are here they don't eat fresh produce <laughs> yes <laughs> what yes. do they feed here so now we as you've seen we've used one spade which is around here yes and now we feed them we continue feeding them with more waste mm -hmm. so you we can pull out this one yeah okay we now transfer them to the cages as you can see yes we fed them at the same time as the others but this one has finished it faster mm -hmm. so if we borrow I, I, I can even ask you to borrow. you, you let me borrow yeah tell me to borrow again here because the yeah. they're all together yeah and it's yeah. warm inside yeah there are so many at this stage. Yes, there. Inside here, mm. we'll still need to separate because the insects here are too many for oh, this crate. Oh, yes. So we'll need to also separate so it that they can become... It reproduces so fast. It reproduces... Yeah, <laughs> it grows very fast. It grows very yeah. fast. <laughs> <laughs> it eats very fast. Mm -mm. And now you can see how many there are. Oh, yeah. Lola, these are too many. And you can many. even feel the warmth. Uh, and you can it's... even feel the fertilizer now this imagine this was that wet waste that you see oh it dries up the more it grows yes the, the yes. Con yes the feed is dry and everything so we can say it dries up it eats mm -hmm. and you can see now this is like the poop for the uh -huh. insects it becomes now the organic frost mm -hmm. which we can say it's like insect poop what? which is dry yeah mm -hmm. so we'll return this inside yeah and now i'll show you now the fourth and fifth insta uh -huh. at this side must be big now <laughs> they must be big and uh -huh. yes they're big so you'll see how fast they're growing uh -huh. and you also want scratch. me to borrow again this one i'll <laughs> like you to borrow what? and yeah hey, let's see let's see let's see are you ready for this yeah. yes so in the middle or just you can borrow anyway. Okay. These ones are big. Oh my god, these ones are big. You can see these ones mm -hmm. and the black ones. You see the black ones which yes, are here? Yes. But moving, mm -hmm. this is now the sixth instead. And some are black. And it's in its cocoon. They look dead. Yeah, you see how a butterfly usually goes to a cocoon. Yes. Mm. Now the same thing with this lava goes to the cocoon. How long does it stay in that cocoon? around 10 days, uh -huh. 5 days, actually 5 days, mm -hmm. so that it becomes now the fly. Mm -hmm. So you can see it goes to the dry places here. The yeah. mm -hmm. uh, reason why you can see this waste is because it has also the 
It was mixed with blood. Blood? What's the use of pig blood? It adds the nitrogen levels into the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Yes. At this stage, do you sell these worms? Yes, you can buy from any, any stage mm -hmm. that you feel like. Mm -hmm. This stage, at least, is better for you to buy when it's at this stage mm -hmm. so that you can actually... We actually recommend the people who are actually trained at this farm yes. to actually buy a starter pack at this stage mm -hmm. where it does not eat, but you just transfer it directly mm -hmm. to the to the screen house which will be down there. So even before we go to the next stage, how much does it go for? When they are wet like this, yes. it goes to around 50 shillings. Per what? Per, per kilo. Mm -hmm. And this is the stage, you see the fifth insta? Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. The fifth insta is the stage where we harvest the mm -hmm. larvae because it's at the full maximum protein level. Mm -hmm. That means that it's around 40 to 50 percent mm -hmm. protein. Mm -hmm. So how do you normally harvest these uh, at this stage? Hand me the silver down there. Okay. And let me take the crate. Oh, so I usually take a crate like this. Mm -hmm. Place this here. Mm -hmm. And that the there. Mm -hmm. And now I'll pick from this crate because oh. the, the substrate is already dry. Mm -hmm. So I pick like this. Some lava like this. Mm -hmm. You don't need... Oh, I don't need you, to hold. just put it here. Oh. And... You shake it off. We shake it, we shake it, we shake it. Mm -hmm. Though they're smaller, mm -hmm. we now harvest those ones. Mm -hmm. And because there are many, you'll have more. Then oh. we continue sieving also this again. Mm -hmm. But we are working on a machinery because, mm -hmm. as you can see, the facility is big. Mm -hmm. So we'll now need a machinery at yeah. this point or stage. That can help you sieve. That can help you sieve and sieve more crates mm -hmm. in an hour. So what do we do with this after sieving? So this, this is, is what also the, now important. the farmer mm -hmm. takes to now to feed their plants. Like people who are strawberry farmers, mm -hmm. tomato farmers, mm -hmm. onion farmers have actually benefited. Linda, let me now take you to the last part of our larvarium, mm -hmm. which is at this stage, mm -hmm. where we have now our se sixth and seventh insta. More so that we now move <laughs> it to mm -hmm. our adult flies. Okay. So more worms are here. Mm -hmm. By worms now, and worms. <laughs> as from here, mm -hmm to going down there, yeah. where you can even see flies have already started magic. Yeah. This is where we have our six to seven things there. Mm -hmm. And I'll direct you to this crate because it's already sieved. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you how the sixth and seventh react. So these ones are ready to be taken to the other level? Now these ones are ready to be taken hey, to the other baby. stage. Here, so animalism. here we, we go. carry <laughs> this uh -huh. and we take it to we take it now to the, to the next the, stage where they, they the stay stage. for five days. Yeah, and then the love room them. now we call the love room. Love room? Yes, love room. <laughs> Insects also have love rooms. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> This is impressive. This is the love room. <laughs> what happens in the love room? So this is where these insects that you're seeing here mm -hmm. will now turn into become a fly. Mm -hmm. And this is where those flies will meet mm -hmm. and will lay eggs. Mm -hmm. So that the whole BSF process mm -hmm. is complete. And why the buzzing sound? When the temperature is around 28 to 32 degrees, mm -hmm. you'll hear a buzzing sound of uh, like a strong buzzing sound, yeah. like a car. Mm -hmm. When they're flying, they usually mate while flying. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is how the cage should look like. To prevent, to prevent the insect from escaping, because mm -hmm. these insects are 
personally we need them to continue and continue mating yeah mm -hmm. so when they die others so it continues a continual process and you yeah. trap them inside here mm -hmm. though they're not they, they do not pose any effect to the environment mm -hmm. in fact the environment loves these insects because mm -hmm. they're the natural waste removers mm -hmm. for the environment so here so here is how we collect our eggs mm -hmm. and as you can see Ah. You can see now here. Mm -hmm. You oh. remember when I was telling you it's yellow? Yes, and it's and smelly. It's, Why is it smelly? It's very smelly because mm. the flies actually need a strong bait. Mm -hmm. When they find somewhere smelly, mm -hmm. they know their instinct is I need to lay my eggs where there will be food for my young ones. Mm -hmm. Thing about the flies, they do not eat. Mm -hmm. They do not have mouths. They, they can only drink. So the flies need somewhere smelly and when they smell somewhere smelly, mm -hmm. they are attracted now to lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. So you can see they have laid everywhere, even in, on the food. Mm -hmm. So the yellow ones are the eggs. And you can see how it has filled. Mm -hmm. You can see how it is. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between these BSF and the normal house flies or the flies that we see outside there? This one, this ones are environment friendly. Mm -hmm. They do not pose any harm to humans. Mm -hmm. In fact, these ones do not even carry pathogens, mm -hmm. like the normal household flies. Mm -hmm. The household flies can actually eat, these ones cannot eat. Mm -hmm. So they are very friendly to the environment and we say it's a natural solution mm -hmm. that the environment uses. At this stage, what are the challenges that you experience? When we started this BSF farm, mm -hmm. We only one, had one cage mm -hmm. and the flies were very few. Mm -hmm. We were not able to get eggs for around two, two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. So it was a constant hassle. If a farmer or someone is interested in venturing into this type of farming, what are the key things that they should consider before they venture into it? You'll need conduits. Mm -hmm. You'll need the cartons if you don't have the wooden blocks and also you'll need the crates that are inside here mm -hmm. you'll need the cage the net the net is very important mm -hmm. and the, even the type of net is very important these nets look so unique are they custom made and you can see even there are some some few some few uh, material which is actually lying around mm -hmm. so that the flies can actually seem as if it's in a forest environment mm -hmm. where they have trees and all that how did you start Dr. Tanga introduced me to his trainees, mm -hmm. one called Eric and Faith, mm -hmm. and they trained me with my partners and also other youths together, mm -hmm. and they gave us the necessary knowledge mm -hmm. to know how to do this. So Nicholas, when you were starting this type of business, how much did you put in? What's the startup capital? Our own input, we inputted around 600,000, mm -hmm. and from Rockefeller and Isipe, mm -hmm. Betty Kibara and Dr. Tanga, they inputted more than 2.6 million mm -hmm. into the project. Now I'm sure there's someone who's interested in venturing into this type of business. What would you advise them? Do not lose hope because the project itself, mm -hmm. you, can start, you can start with a minimal expense, mm -hmm. where even around, you can start this project even with around 8,000, 100,000, mm -hmm. and everything will be okay. You look so young. How old are you? I'm um, around 24 years old. I just turned 24 years old this two days, uh, three, two weeks ago. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Tell me, how has this business benefited you as a person? We actually know that youths in Kenya, it's very hard for you to get a job. Yeah. So the the project itself benefits us with giving us an income, me and my partners, and it also benefits us by giving us a, a foundation to grow. Yeah. The expert is here, we go see him? Yes. Which side? Yes. Okay. So here is Dr. Tanga Linda. Ah, Dr. Tanga is here. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. I see you're busy, yeah. busy here. Oh, yeah, welcome to our, our Black Soldier Production Facility. Thank you so much. I hear these people call you the global expert. Ah, good to know. Tell us about BSF. Yeah, this is a very interesting insect mm -hmm. and which has been widely used globally mm -hmm. as an alternative source of protein. Mm -hmm. And the most interesting part of this insect is that it is grown on waste. 
So it has the ability to recycle waste mm-hmm. into value-added products mm-hmm. using a circular economic approach. Mm-hmm. And this byproduct includes insect pro- insect-based protein, mm-hmm. insect oil, and also the frost fertilizer, mm-hmm. which is very, very good in enhancing um, the growth and the yield mm-hmm. of crops. Why should a farmer breed BSF? One, it is, it's, it's, it's the low-cost investment um, uh, technology, mm-hmm. and the fact that it uses waste, you're helping to manage environmental pollution, mm-hmm. and also the, 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 fact, the fact that it reproduces very, very fast. Mm-hmm. So you can have one insect producing between five to 900 um, eggs. Mm-hmm. That means it can grow very fast, and the larvae are extremely rich in nutrients. Mm-hmm. Um, that are comparable to that of plant-based um, origins, mm-hmm. as well as are even better than that of plant-based uh, uh, sources. Mm. You've mentioned that BSF is high on proteins. What are other components that uh, this particular BSF has? They are also very rich in fat. Black soil has fat levels between 30 to 40 percent, mm-hmm. which is more than the plant and animal-based sources. Mm-hmm. They are also rich in amino acids. They have uh, some of the serial limited amino acids are present in the insects. Mm-hmm. They also are rich in uh, minerals and vitamins. Mm-hmm. These are all uh, ingredients that are required mm-hmm. in the animal-based feeds. Mm-hmm. Dr. earlier on, the farmer was telling us that uh, this particular fertilizer gives a farmer good yields. What's the science behind it? Mm-hmm. The frass is very rich. It contains very good high levels of um, potassium, nitrogen and phosphorus. Mm-hmm. And these are very good components. And also they contain what we call chitin or chitosan, which is able to enhance the microorganism community within the soil and, and, and therefore make the soil very, very rich and, uh, for nutrients, mm-hmm. for the uptake for plants yeah. and then enhancing um, the yield. Which type of plants really grow well when you've put this particular fertilizer? All plants are good to grow with this type of fertilizer, mm-hmm. but most importantly, vegetables um, and uh, some and fruits mm-hmm. are very, very good alternatives um, that, that, can, that, can, that farmers can easily get benefits from. You're from Isipe, and many people, many farmers have dubbed you as the global expert, and you have been pushing for farming of insects for farmers across the country. Why so? Mm-hmm. And we are looking at low-cost technology that can easily benefit our farmers' uh, population. And so that is why most of the time our technology are developed um, based on farmer-driven demand, mm-hmm. which means farmer come to us with complaints of, on, on certain things and we look for solutions. From an expert point of view, how should a structure of BSF look like? A farmer can use any netting structure mm-hmm. as long as you can design it and that can allow enough air into the system. How are the market dynamics in this business? Right now, the demand for animal protein in general in Kenya is about 90,000 tons. Mm-hmm. And if you look at all the farmers in Kenya that produces black soldier fly, they are producing just about 2,300 tons. Mm-hmm. That means we, we are simply replacing just 5% mm-hmm. of that demand. Isipe, does it offer trainings to farmers or maybe interested parties? Yes, yes, we do a lot of, a lot of training. Mm-hmm. And uh, interestingly, I'm pleased to say that we got funding from the Rockefeller Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, that helped us a lot. Um, to test different business models mm-hmm. and it's, we're working, working with smallholder farmers. Mm-hmm. Under the Rockefeller project, we trained close to 2,000 um, farmers mm-hmm. and our training are basically um, free. Mm-hmm. We train them for five days, uh, hands-on, mm-hmm. where they are required to go through all the developmental stages of this insect. Mm-hmm. And th- with that uh, knowledge, they are able to handle this production system much more easier. Mm-hmm. Finally, how is the growth cycle before one starts to harvest? Um, no, the, the, as I said, the insect has a very short reproductive cycle uh-huh. and, and as, as such you can start harvesting as early as within the, the first production system but it is more important to scale it up for a longer time mm. for, for a way to be able to meet a large volume that you can be yeah. able to harvest yeah. and then allow some to continue to uh, uh, expand okay. on the production facility. Yeah. Linda, this is our products yes. after we're finished with the whole BSF process. Mm-hmm. This is our dried insects. Mm-hmm. This protein is usually used for, for feeding animals such as pigs, mm-hmm. chicken, uh-huh. and also fish. Also cats and dogs, mm-hmm. that they give them a nice shiny coat. Ah, then for, we have, for cats. Yes, mm-hmm. for cats. Mm-hmm. Then we have our zihanga frass, our compost. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one, 
this one will urge all farmers who are actually doing strawberry farming, mm -hmm. it's and best for tomato strawberry. farming, mm -hmm. and also onion farming, mm -hmm. and the large scale, this is the best option for you. But come to us, mm -hmm. we have the solution, wow. grow organic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. This is all organic. This is purely organic, nothing added, mm -hmm. nothing what, high NPK. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very good for for the farmers mm -hmm. to grow wow. their crops. Here. I'm totally impressed. Yes. Hope you've learned something from today's episode of BSF Farming. Thank you so much for watching the show. My name is Linda Koske. <laughs>